the sixth woodblock in the ancient series of 10 Japanese woodblock carvings that represent the progression of one's spiritual attainment or liberation. It's called Riding the Ox Home. I'll read it in its entirety and then we'll discuss what at least I think the meaning is. Mounting the bull, slowly I return homeward. The voice of my flute intones through the evening, measuring with hand beats the pulsating harmony. I direct the endless rhythm. Whoever hears this melody will join me. Comment. This struggle is over. Gain and loss are assimilated. I sing the song of the village woodsman and play the tunes of the children. Astride the bull, I observe the clouds above. Onward I go, no matter who may wish to call me back. Starting with the last line first, the work described in the fifth ox herding picture has paid off, holding the nose ring tight and not allowing even a doubt, has led to this place where one feels so much fidelity with the awakening process, with realization, with unfiltered reality, with practice enlightenment, that it is clear nothing's going to call you back at this point. It is clear that no matter what happens outwardly or inwardly, in one's surroundings, in one's body, to one's health, this process is what life is for. We're here to wake up to what we've never been asleep to. To put it in Zen terminology, we're here to solve the problem of birth and death, and nothing is going to cause us to deviate from this. This stage represents peace. This stage represents the end of suffering, the end of personal suffering. This represents the end of struggle. This represents equanimity. Equanimity as described here is not an experience. It's not a moment of peace. It's not a moment of respite from the constantly seeking mind and the self-doubt. It is to know peace as the background and the foreground, as the ground of being and the peace in knowing there is no ground of being. This is the peace that passeth all understanding and it is available to all of us. To put it in practical terms, equanimity is when we no longer struggle against the moment. This is when presence becomes non-experiential, but lived, known in the bones and marrow to be just as this is, and the only way it could be. We'll still feel pain. We'll still have loss, but we no longer separate from the moment. We no longer believe that things could be other than they are. We no longer believe that there's any value in running off into our mind, imagining things are different than they are. We no longer believe in how things should be or could be because it's become exquisitely clear that things are just how they are. And we know how they are through our five sense gates, through the sounds, the sensations, the visual experiences, the images before our eyes. We know how things are through the movement and stillness. We don't have to reference thought to convince ourselves that things are this way or that way because the hidden agenda in doing that has been disclosed. And the hidden agenda is we want to know how things are so that we can convince ourselves that we can make them how they're not. This is the root of suffering. And this little man who's jumped on the ox and is riding at home playing his flute has plucked up the root of suffering. In the original wood carving, he's actually riding the bull or the ox backwards. He's playing his flute and the ox is going wherever it feels natural to move. This is such a beautiful and poetic symbol of what equanimity really is. It's a deep, deep trust in life itself. It is a knowing that wherever this moment goes, however it unfolds, 
Whatever happens, whatever is seen, heard, tasted, felt, it's already okay. It's perfectly okay. It is the only way it could be, and there's nothing apart from that. The fidelity here is complete. And thus, what is there left to do but play the flute? Play the song of your life. Play the song of the conventional narrative of being you. The events, the joys and sorrows, the ups and downs, gains and losses. These are just textures. These are just the way the bull's moving in the moment. But there's nothing left to believe that it could be other than it is, or that it should be other than it is, or that happiness rests in having things a way that they're not. There is an ongoing epidemic of dissatisfaction among humans. This is where that ends for you as an individual. This is where dissatisfaction ends. This is where the illusion of how it could be ends. This is where we stop saying no to life and we say yes naturally to all the movements, textures, to the mystery, to the unfathomable peace, to the truth that we can't avoid physical pain and we can't live in a world where we're always happy, always smiling. That illusion is gone. Now there is just what is. And what is is good enough. It's more than good enough. It's beyond the categories of enjoyable or not enjoyable. Nothing tastes as good as living truth. Nothing tastes as good as reality. This is also where relative meets absolute. We sing the song of the village woodsman and play the tunes of the children. This is the relative. And that we do it without question. That is where relative meets absolute. This is the entry point where everything becomes an entry point. Every moment is an entry point. Every sound is your teacher now. Every image, every form or color, every warmth or coolness, even pain now is your teacher. It is the gate. You are the gate. You've never not been the gate. The gate enters itself endlessly without hesitation without questioning, without a need for anything, including enlightenment, including the end to suffering. This is where we find that suffering ends when we stop trying to end suffering. This is peace.